Hello friends, I'm sure by now you've heard that Roe vs. Wade has been overturned and this is a moment to rejoice in. And I've been reflecting upon how this event has unfolded and I feel like this is a prophetic event. That God is saying something to us through this. Now, how did this all happen? Well, it happened on a Friday, which was supposed to be the feast of St. John the Baptist, but it was bumped because of the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Let's consider the visitation when Mary, pregnant with Jesus, visits her cousin Elizabeth, pregnant with John the Baptist. Now listen to St. Teresa of Calcutta describe this event. The little one, the little unborn child in the womb of his mother Elizabeth, lived with joy at the presence of Christ. How strange that God should use an unborn child to proclaim the coming of Christ. And there we understand today the terrible happening to that little unborn child. We know how Mary received Jesus and we know today how terribly mother herself kills her own child, murders her own child. What a terrible, ter terrible scene of murder. Greater still because it is its own mother. So here we have this feast day that was supposed to be celebrated on the day Roe vs. Wade was overturned where two unborn children come in contact with each other. One, our divine savior, the other, the greatest prophet ever, St. John the Baptist. I don't think this is coincidence. Secondly, we go to the feast the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, which was celebrated on June 24th, the same day Roe vs. Wade was overturned. What does this devotion remind us of? Two things come to mind. Number one, the burning love of Jesus Christ for people. Because when you see the image of the Sacred Heart, it's usually on fire or it's glowing, representing Jesus' passionate love for us. And number two, Jesus' wounded heart, pierced by a lance and wounded by thorns. This reminds us, sin wounds the heart of Jesus. The heart of love is wounded when his burning love is rejected. See, what wounds the heart of Jesus? What wounds his love? Sin. And there's nothing that would wound the heart of Jesus more, I believe, than the sin of a boy. Since Roe vs. Wade came into effect, 63 million unborn babies have been killed in the United States. It's really difficult to grasp the magnitude of this number. Imagine that you had these destructive missiles and you fired them out to kill 63 million people in the European area. How many countries could the population be reduced to nothing? You could kill every man, woman, and child in the countries of Ireland, Sweden, Switzerland, Norway, Finland, Denmark, Greece, Portugal, and Serbia. These countries have a combined total population of about 63 million people. That is about the same number of babies killed in the United States since Roe vs. Wade in 1973, which gave women a federal right to kill their unborn child. To say that that wounds the heart of Jesus is an extreme understatement. I believe it was Mother Teresa that said, the fruit of abortion is nuclear war. If a mother can murder her own child in her own womb, what is left for you and for me to kill each other? Even in the scripture, it is written, even if mother could forget her child, I will not forget you. I have curved you in the palm of my hand. So indeed, 
This sin wounds the heart of Jesus Christ. And so it's no coincidence. Roe was overturned the day we remember the wounded, loving heart of Jesus. And then I think about what happened about three months earlier. And what did we have three months earlier? Our Pope consecrating Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. I just can't help but think perhaps something broke in the spiritual realm, allowing this great miracle to happen. You know, when the Pope consecrated Russia, I just thought the fruit of that consecration would be maybe the conflict that's the war that's going on in that area of the world would just stop. So I had been waiting for something like that to happen. But perhaps this is the first step. Because if we want peace in the world, we first have to protect the innocent, the unborn. As people respond to this ruling, particularly pro-choice, the far left, you're going to hear all sorts of crazy responses, such as this is a slap to in the face to women. I think Nancy Pelosi said that the day after. I can think of nothing that is more demeaning to a woman than stripping her of motherhood. I, I just can't think of something more degrading to a woman than saying you have a right to kill your own child. And I also find it very interesting that this is what the left is pushing for when they have a very difficult time defining what a woman is. But now we're talking about women's rights. The, woman, the woman's reproductive rights is being stripped from them. This is this other language that you'll hear. You know what, friends? I am all for women reproducing. If women want to reproduce, Nancy Pelosi, go at it. <laughs> because by the time a baby is in the womb of a mother, reproduction has already happened. So we're not talking about one's right to reproduce. Now, after conception, what we're talking about is motherhood. We're talking about a human person inside that mother that deserves life, that deserves respect, that has the right to life because they are a person. Now, some would say the life within the womb of a mother is not human. I would say, well, have we thrown out common sense? What is it then? Is it a dog? Is it a cat? You know, my wife has given birth seven times and I've never been surprised by what has come forth from the delivery. It's always been a human baby, a little human person made in the image and likeness of God. I've never heard meow. I never, I never heard woof. Dogs never came forth. A little baby has come forth and that little baby eventually says, Mama. Dada. And it's beautiful. So now we're seeing strong reactions to Roe vs. Wade being overturned. And some of these reactions are nothing less than diabolical. You see, the devil hates God. And so he can't destroy God. So what is he going to do? Try and destroy what God loves the most. And what does God love the most? A human person. And so if he can't get to God. He'll get to what God loves the most, and that is a human person. And who are the most vulnerable? A baby, defenseless, in the womb of a mother. The devil wants to destroy human life because human life is made in the image and likeness of God. And abortion is the denial of this. And it's a great sin and it's a great evil. And so when you see people rage against this, decision and they start destroying properties, whatever that might be, understand this is a spiritual battle as well as a battle at the human level. So at the human level, you do what you need to do. I'm not going to comment on that, but on the spiritual level, we need to continue to fast, pray, seek Our Lady's intercession, offer prayers for the unborn and for truth to prevail because this is not done. We're just getting going. There's something that has shifted in the spiritual life, I think. Something has broken through. Grace is moving, friends. And so let's avail our hearts to this grace in our own personal life, but also continue to ask God's mercy upon us so that the dignity of the human person will always be upheld, 
no matter the circumstance, particularly in the womb of a mother. Thanks for watching.